session. We will reconvene. Uh, the first thing on the agenda is the Pledge of Allegiance. <coughs> to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, and indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, there were no actions taken during the closed session. We will resume closed session at the end of the open session. Um, next thing on the agenda, Mr. Lee. Oh, she's going to take your well, microphone I, I, away I from you? I kind of did. I told him that I would introduce him. This is Mr. Lee, our um, music and PE teacher. And we, as, well, you might not know, that we have three different trimesters, and every trimester, there is usually a brand new group of kids that comes in through our lessons. So this is a fairly new group. I see some of them are kind of the familiar faces in the music class, but we have some new faces in the music class. So they've just started. This is only their second week um, of playing together. So I'll introduce you to Mr. Lee, who is their fearless leader director, and he'll let you know what they're going to Thank you. So, um, like Liz said, this is our second week, so uh, we have some eighth graders who've been in here for, for a few years that need some tunes that they could uh, be leaders in the band and kind of share with the other kids, knowing that we had to play uh, for you guys today. So we're working on some new songs as well, but uh, today we're going to play some Ogu Kaku.
this year. So they go, all right, we'll follow them, they're going to be the leader of this uh, next year's group. No pressure. Uh, yeah, no pressure at all, but the United States is wonderful, wonderful. We're so very proud of what we've accomplished. And last, uh, I don't know how many of you got to see the Lion King, but they were um, part of the Lion King presentation and they were absolutely fabulous. So, thank you. Thank you. When they begin, it's just um, interesting, and then this is what happens. Thanks, you guys. Great job. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Make sure you don't touch the ones Okay, the next thing on the agenda is a PTA presentation. Hi everybody, I'm Katie Reese and I am the current president of the Data Selection PTA. And we have a special presentation. Is, is that my phone? Here you go. Thank you. Thank you. The next item, uh, the next item on the agenda is reviewing correspondence. Uh, we have three pieces of correspondence. They're in the board packet. Um, uh, are there any comments or questions about the correspondence? One, question. one of the requests is for uh, C CESD board reports and actions dating back to 1996. Uh, do, do we have records that go back to 1996? So on a public records request, um, we have 10 days to respond. I believe that came in on the 17th. Um, I'm expecting to send our response tomorrow as to um, which parts of the request fall under the California Public Records Act um, and 
also a estimated time frame on when we can respond to any individual request and estimated cost to make the copies at five cents a copy um, so I'll be responding tomorrow on that so as at this point we're just setting up the time frame and this request is quite extensive um, dating all the way back to 1996 um, we're just setting up the time frame now to do it um, until we start digging through um, some of our records in the bus barn. Um, it's unknown to me um, how many records we'll be able to produce. Thank you. Okay. Right. Yes. I had a question. You talking about the cost in you know five cents a copy and this a lot of pages, but also the amount of time. I think I'd like to know, just, you know, your estimated amount of time it's going to take staff. Um, are you looking for an estimate no, now, no, or no, you want no, me to come no, back no, with an estimate later? Back, we'll come back. Sure. A realistic estimate would be probably involve uh, nominating and uh, other staff. Who, who all would be involved in that and having to collect all that? Um, that'll be me um, and Hannah mainly. Um, we might also um, elicit some other help over spring break um, because this is requesting a lot of records. Um, there's a lot of files to go through. But um, we, at this point, I focused on the required response within the 10 day time frame. Um, haven't really gotten yet to um, digging into the records. So, um, as far as the number of people that we'll need to help out on that, that's still an unknown. Is that unknown? But um, I'll report back out next meeting regarding that if you like. I'm a little buried in my paperwork. Who was that request from? I'm sorry, I probably should know that. It was from Rocky Dayanis. Okay, thank you. No. <coughs> okay. Uh, how yours out. Next item on the agenda is the review and approval of minutes from the meeting of February 14th. Is there a motion to approve the minutes? I move that we approve the minutes. I'll second. Is there a discussion on the motion? I had a question. I'm trying to open it. The, it's not opening. It says that I, while it's opening, from what I recall, it says I did not ask for a motion to rescind. Something that doesn't sound right because I did ask for it. Unless I'm reading it wrong, it's still not opening yet on my computer. Oh. But when I read it earlier, uh, ba, ba, ba. on number four, approval of minutes, number two, it says member friend did not ask for a motion to rescind. I'm confused about that because I did, and I hadn't. I didn't go back and look at the, listen to the meeting, but contextually that doesn't make sense. There, I don't. I, I, I think you had a motion to rescind, in this meeting, and that motion didn't get a second. I think what. No, that was February. In January, you guys denied my request against government or against the board bylaws you denied it to be on the January agenda so if this is the January minutes no I, this is the February yeah, February in March the regular meeting of January okay all right we reviewed the January minutes at the February meeting oh I'm off a meeting I apologize I'm off a month that threw me at the top okay Further questions or suggestions? <coughs> okay. Ms. Held, will you record the vote, please? Member Brown? Aye. Member Wright? Aye. Member Friend? Aye. Member Aye. Member Wright? Aye. <coughs> oh, I, I need to tell uh, the group as a whole that we did make one change to the agenda. Um, that occurred before the closed session. And the change is that what's on the original agenda as item 
approval of an agreement for professional <coughs> services. Uh, it was pulled from the consent agenda. It's now going to be on the regular agenda as item 10.3. And what was item 10.3, review, approve the second interim report, is has been moved to item 10.4. Sorry, I didn't say that at the very beginning. Um, next item on the agenda is public comment. And this is a time when members of the public are invited to address the board about anything that's within the purview of the board. It's the place where you can address things that aren't on the agenda. If you have particular comments that you want to make that are related to an item that is on the agenda, you can either make those comments now or you can make those comments when we get to the agenda item. I don't have right any now, we don't have any requests to speak during the agenda item. So if, if you do have a request when we get to an agenda item, raise your hand and we'll accommodate you. Any comments from the public? Well, this is a very quiet <laughs> group. Uh, moving on, next item on the agenda is to approve or deny interdistrict transfer requests. Superintendent Smith. Thank you, President Troop. Um, my recommendation on this one is to approve it. It's for uh, an employee's renewal, a renewal for an employee's child. Um, somebody make a motion to approve the request. So moved. Member Friend moved. Do we have a second? Oh. Member Wilson seconded. Is there a discussion? Uh, so Ms. Held, if you would record the vote, please. Member White? Aye. Member Friend? Aye. President Drew? Aye. Member Wilson? Aye. Member Brown? Aye. Can I ask a generic IDT question? Sure. For our current eighth graders, Scott, are you aware of anybody who's tried yet with our new MOU to get released? Is that, are they released already? Is that smooth? Nice. Um, all at this point, we published the parent guide. Um, we provided the parent guide to all of the eighth grade parents at parent conferences. Um, and it's published on our homepage and under family resources tab. So in two spots on our website. Um, we've been communicating with them. I'm not aware of any issues. No issues have been brought back to me yet. Um, but um, parents are being encouraged if they do want to um, procure the release from Coast Unified, um, that they were to, um, they, to be on schedule to get into everything and all the orientations and the class scheduling. Um, that's all part of the parent guide um, for students. Um, they'd actually, um, one of the days is go to Loams and participate with the Loams students um, on scheduling. And so to be on schedule with all that, um, the parents were notified that they need to request the release. I believe it was this week. Um, right, and then they'll, the potential children will begin to look at them on the 12th, which was Monday, although. Oh yeah, it was last week actually. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, uh, Norway High School will be here next week in the evening. Yep. Down the time and, uh, and all those eighth grade parents have that schedule in hand as part of the guide. Thanks. I'm sorry, I don't know if that was in the right and spot or not. not. I'm sorry? I don't know if that was in the right spot, so thank you for well, letting no, me guess that. that. That's fine. Uh, I think it's mentioned in Scott's superintendent's report as well the uh, availability of the guide, so thank you for doing that. Um, Next thing on the item is presentation from ASB. Do we have an ASB? Charlie. Charlie. Wait, I just saw him on the drums. He's multi-talented. Multi-faceted. April 
20th, we have a Freaky Friday, which is where the kids dress as adults and the adults dress as children. <laughs> and then on May 18th, we have Twin Day. What was the date no. of the spring down? April 27th. April 27th, thank you. Wow, well, Fridays were a green day. Yeah. It was Friday? It was Friday. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. If I could just also mention that ASB um, helps with the morning <coughs> announcements, and Charlie has been doing the morning announcements, um, him and his vice president, every morning all year, and he's been doing a great job, and we thank you for that, Charlie. Uh, next on the agenda is the Parent Teachers Association. Is there any one from? Oh, look, she's back again. Thank you. Uh, next item on the agenda is a report from the Health and Safety Committee. Thank you, Nessa. Next, next item on the agenda is a presentation by Abby Lynch, the food services lead. She's actually the food services manager. Oh, dear. I'm just reading what's on the agenda. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm just reading what's on the agenda. I'm sorry.
Abby, hang on just a second. Sure. Uh, we're going to try killing the lights so people can better see the slides. And let us know if you're afraid or if it's... <laughs> so that's adding lights. <laughs> yeah, yeah much, much better. It's not that impressive. Really? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm Abby Lynch. I'm the food service manager here at Payton's Elementary. This is, gosh, in May I was hired for five years. I um, work right along to any women um, who is my happy assistant. And I know the last time I was here I gave you a little update, and I know I am here talking about um, two other items, but I wanted to kind of update you on what the cafeteria has been doing since you guys um, heard from me last. So, So um, for our school nutrition program, our reimbursement, reimbursement rates are um, for the National School Lunch Program, which is the NSLP, and then we have SEP. Um, both of them just show you how much we get back for each paid student, each reduced um, student, and each free student. Um, so I'm not only going after the free and reduced children to eat. Of course, I'm going after them to apply um, because I want them to be free and reduced. Um, but I'm going after those paid kids as well, um, because those, I mean, if you look at our school, the majority is paid kids. So those are the ones that are going to increase my participation and my revenue. Um, down below, you see in 2015-16, we had 64 students, 37 reduced, and 35% free reduced. 2016-17 was 77 students, free, 10 reduced, and 39% free and reduced. And then today, as of, as of today's date, we are 78 students Total reimbursement from our federal in 2015 was 47,719 for the tents, and 2016 was 55,341 and 62 cents, which I was really excited to see that number because I think I quoted you guys um, last time. I was like, oh, we're going to be at the end of the year, we'll be 8,000 more than the previous year, and we were really close. So um, that was really nice to see. And then today, as of date, we are 37. Um, $1,758.52, but we currently average 5500 The next few months are our biggest months within, you know, without spring break. Um, but this month in May, um, you know, April and June, and April actually. So we should be $7,000 increase from last year. So as long as there's a trend and we're always going up, I'm really kind of good. <laughs> The commodities, um, in addition to the reimbursement we get, um, we also get entitlement foods. Um, so there's a bunch of little stats you guys can read. Um, I don't have to really go through it all, but um, it has increased from last year by $1,000. So last year I, you know, requested 
$1,000 for produce, and this year I was okay, $1,500 is going to the grant, let's decrease that. $2,000 now, let's decrease that. And so we're constantly looking for new ways to increase our revenue. To get out that toll road. And um, how can I cut my budget even further, which has been a kind of a huge passion for me, um, as you can tell, just the past, um, or since I entered um, into this job. So with grants, uh, sourcing local food, partnering with community-based or nonprofit organizations, and participation gaining. And then, so this brings me to, um, in February, I applied for a California Grown Grant, and we requested $75,000. Our vision of why we asked for the grant was by involving students to, in every step of the food system, from growing and harvesting to cooking and eating, we will increase the school's food program participation with increased buy-in from students. We requested this um, to basically have a greenhouse on campus, and it is going to source the majority of our local vegetables and fruits right from our garden. Um, so we are going to do starter vegetables and fruit plants, which I um, partnered with Cool Earth that are going to give me a whole bunch of starter plants. Um, if anyone wants to pick up some next week, let me know. <laughs> um, also, I'm not jumping into this. If you can't do a um, greenhouse, we can go to another plant. I'm not saying I'm making this decision, but um, this is kind of my vision of what I'd love to do. And so we will have the greenhouses. We're also going to plant fruit trees. We have multiple trees on this campus, but they don't produce anything. And um, a lot of them are actually dead. And so if we can have an orange tree, an apple tree, that is all I'm asking for, I spend $80 a month, or it goes a week, sorry, on fruits, because the kids, I mean, that's just a grab and go thing, that's what they want. And um, if we can get a system where we have fruits, you know, that we can utilize, um, I won't have to, you know, buy the fruit anymore. Um, we, with that, we part, we're trying to partner with community organizations, and um, one was the Gardening Queen, starting Queen, starting club. Sorry, and um, talking with them about doing volunteer work. So you know, kind of making a commitment plan where they come up every hour or one hour a day, or even two hours, you know, every other day. But the whole picture is that yes, we're going to have staff involved, we're going to have kids involved, they're going to be in there harvesting as well, pulling, cooking. You know, they. I want them to see what they need. Um, but we also need the community. We want the community to come up and help us as well because what has happened with our gardens in the past is they haven't sustained because we didn't have anyone watching over it. Um, and since we are a low faculty school, it's kind of hard to do that. I mean, um, we don't even have landscaping right now. We have our men that are taking it. So um, if the community really gets involved um, and getting a whole calendar set up where we all are doing something um, to provide these kids with fresh local fruits and vegetables, um, that would be it. So another part of the grant is using the funds um, to partner with community organizations such as DOI Fish Market and Old Creek Ranch and make them our main vendors um, for locally sourced beef and fish. You will see on, well, I'll go to the next slide after this. Um, there you go. Yeah, so on the next slide you'll see that Old Creek Ranch, Ranch actually um, guaranteed their pricing for us for next year. They're going to give us $3. And three dollars per pound of their ground beef, um, which is a savings of five dollars per pound. You get that in store, it's gonna be eighty dollars. Um, they want to see our kids fed healthy. They donated food uh, beef in the past, but now um, we just want to be completely moving forward um, and having them be on board with the actual meat vendor. And um, so then it says the connection with Patriot Garden Club, Bleeding of Slow, to uh, our community organization for volunteer working hours, use of our unprocessed pilot program fruits and vegetables instead of canned produce. So these are all ways that I can utilize the grant. It's a very diverse grant, um, and so I kind of put it in there that I can play with it um, a little bit. And so, um, okay, so what is happening now in the places? Um, cafeteria. We just had our 2017-18 administrative review. We had no fiscal findings for our review, yay. Um, it's, it's every three-year process, so it gets really scary when it comes <laughs> on, you know, because it's not like we get audited every year. Um, and so when it does, it is kind of nerve-wracking, um, but we were really excited that we 
pretty many findings um, after two years. Uh, they reviewed our free and reduced applications, no conflict of seizures, the unclouded textuals, and the cafe fiscal funds for our team. Reviewed our wellness policy, which was rewritten last year uh, by the 2016 17 Wellness Committee, which um, I was lucky to be a part of and join. They reviewed a school CASA plan, pre safety inspections, commodity reports, and an inventory, monthly menus, menu items, CM labels, and formation standards. They reviewed PS, PLS sign, making sure all mills that came through the line were reimbursable mills and correctly accounted for. I might have surprised the kids with cookies, but they were really good. Well, right. <laughs> Just add that um, the when the CD comes in and does the administrative review and the audit on the cafeteria, that's a big deal, and it's a big deal for us not to have any findings. So um, <laughs> thank you, Abby, for all your great work. Um, it's really appreciated around here, and the kids are benefiting from it. Thank you. Okay, I have to ask one thing. What does H-A-C-C-P stand for? Or did I miss that? It's the Cracker Critical Point Procedures. So in your Food Service Manager document, it should have a title on it. 
Thank you. It's how people uh, it's a long, and are paying off at critical points in their lives. It's a long acronym. It is very long. <laughs> uh, next are the board member reports. Are there board members who have something they'd like to share with the group? Mr. Wilson. I'll go as far as I can. Um, uh, Scott and I attended the small school districts uh, association convention in Sacramento at the end of last month. And uh, it, it's nice because it does address the issues of small school districts. And uh, um, some of the uh, workshops, uh, just to give an idea, one was on arts learning to uh, not only um, uh, grow your program, but to get grants. And there were amazing grants uh, all over the state, which uh, we would be eligible for. So that's one thing. Uh, another workshop was on legally speaking, and they just fielded all sorts of questions on legal issues. Again, small school districts have unique uh, challenges in that. And one of my favorites always is the political, the politically speaking, where they have a Kevin Gordon and Jack O'Connell, who was the former superintendent of schools for the state, they uh, uh, they have a firm called Capital Advisors, and they talk about what's actually happening at the state level for small school districts, and uh, and they kind of sort out things. You know, hear all sorts of stuff in the news, but they know what's going on. And over the years, they've, they've been dead on accurate with uh, their uh, predictions on how certain pieces of legislation, what they'll actually do, and their chances for success and all that. Uh, but, <coughs> excuse me, the, the, uh, um, the workshop that I felt uh, did the most and it's, was very timely, it it's, was on school safety. Obviously, that's on all our minds. And uh, the uh, guy who handled that, I don't know his name here somewhere, but he, uh, he uh, was a superintendent and uh, and a former police officer, or a, 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 what was it, a chief of police, and all these things. And a lot of what we think is going on, the data doesn't back that up. Um, and some of the things are, are disturbing, but we need to address them. And one was that, uh, that since Columbine, up until uh, Parkland, Every incident on a K-12 campus or you know, on, a, on a, a primary campus was um, was in a rural area, which was surprising. Um, and then, you know, they have to keep in mind it's not if, it's when, and be prepared and with that state of mind. Um, and uh, things that we could think about. Um, Working on it's like a threat assessment team that's focusing specifically on this, following guidelines by uh, different agencies. Uh, Homeland Security actually has one for schools. Um, and then things like having a common language, these are all common sense things, but having a common language for the staff and even parents. So when a word is said, everybody's on the same page about what that means. And another one is substitute teachers knowing what to do in a lockdown. And uh, this was the my main takeaway that more of these threats um, are internal than external. And that um, this uh, statement that someone must value each student. You have to know what's going on with the students and their families to understand <coughs> where a threat may Come from because it's always it's always triggered by something. So anyway, um, I hope you'd like to see us uh, tackle some of those issues. <coughs> that was, thank you. Thank you. <coughs> oh, well, one last thing. I would encourage <coughs> the board members in the future to go because it's a it's a good uh, you know a well spent day and a half, and also it's easier to network <coughs> than at the CSBA and the people you're networking with. 
you have their own stories and their own solutions to tell. So I think that's uh, something I would encourage you guys to do. <coughs> well, I went to the Lion King and I was so impressed and I was thrilled. It was a wonderful evening and a wonderful job done by um, the drama teacher, and Victoria Dow. Thank you. And it was amazing. So I, I couldn't believe the quality of the production. It's really good. One of our stars is sitting in the audience. Yeah, it's really good. It's such a good job. Really Don't well, I too went to the drama uh, drama production, uh, The Lion King. And as a theater teacher, um, and now that we have an MOU, I'd like to see a number of students move from this school over to Laguna to help <laughs> me. Um, and help my students as well. I, I wish I had known how, how professional that production was. I would have liked to have brought my students here to, to, uh, to see it. I think she makes a um, DVD out of it. it outstanding. I, I, live production is, is yeah. not a DV, DVD. Oh, I'm right. telling you that right now. Right. Um, uh, there were so many students um, large roles, small roles, that, that contributed to that to make it a story. It was just outstanding. Mm -hmm. I went to Lion King as well, and it was amazing. I especially liked in the program how Victoria explained how she went and she met people and taught them the dialect and brought material back. That To me, that just added a lot. And, at first, when it first started and they're singing, I'm like, what in the world are they even saying? Because I couldn't understand it, and I realized then it wasn't me. It was truly a different language. And so all the different languages they thought, I thought that was cool. Live theater, Morro Bay High School, the rest of this week, they're doing um, Rocky Horror Picture Show. What? Little Shop of Horse, sorry. That's, wait a minute, yeah, off. Little Shop of Horse. And apparently Nathan Moran, one of our graduates, is one of the key roles in there, so he's doing that. Um, as far as the safety that you mentioned, Ron, um, there's a new app out, and I don't know if it'd be appropriate for our school or not, but some of the schools are. It's called Stop It. It's an app that kids can put on their phone, and basically the thing, thinking behind it is if you see it, say it. If you see something, say something. So it's a way for students to anonymously, um, I mean, just today there was an issue with the district in our county, you know, and so I don't know how it came out that people knew about it, but... Um, the See It Stop It app might be a way for kids who are uncomfortable, like getting into, yes ma'am. Sorry, I was going to mention that we have a system that is kind of antiquated at this site, the VTIP. They are starting to look into more updated ideas, and I've heard the PFFT one. Okay. But yeah. The, I just knew the Stop I It. I will be yeah. changing that very soon. Right. But it's just yeah. a way that kids, if they don't want to, like, get in trouble for ratting on somebody or if they just want to and when I was hearing it presented too I mean some students if they're needing yeah. the help they can kind of re re request help for themselves too so it's kind of a cool thing but yeah Ron Ahiri the safety thing is issue gee I went to the lion thing too <laughs> <laughs> I walked back earlier in the meeting to compliment Vanessa on her daughter's performance, not realizing. <laughs> so, I'm sorry I ignored you. It was great. Uh, um, I, I have one more comment. I only missed the line because I had to go to LA on <laughs> for my mom, because I was looking forward to it. Uh, uh, I mentioned earlier, or maybe that was in, well, Anyway, uh, Scott and I went to a superintendent president's dinner that Jim Brescia sponsored. Uh, it was good to schmooze with some people and meet people who I hadn't met before. Uh, also to spend some time with, uh, <coughs> once again, people from Coast and people from San Luis Coastal. Uh, the presenter was, uh, I'm was the Smith in Lozano Smith, and I forget his first name. Mike. Mike Smith. 
and, and he did a good job of eliciting comments and input from people. And again, we talked about topical things. As always, safety was on the agenda and, and there were some good things that were said. Uh, there was a lot of talk about how people, especially people with high schools in their district, were going to handle today's uh, demonstration. And it, it's just good to hear from other people how they're dealing with things. Um, I attended the a safety meeting for parents that was held Monday night. Uh, Scott put it on. Uh, there weren't many parents here, but those who were here, uh, I think, um, had a good conversation. Uh, we talked about a number of things, uh, fencing, other school safety issues. <laughs> but one of the things that came out of it was that one of the parents uh, spoke up and said, <coughs> excuse me, um, he, he went, he went out of his way to compliment the school on the atmosphere on campus. He's a, a graduate of, of Cayucas Middle Elementary School. And he said, when I was in second grade, I got beat up all the time. And he said, I now have a second grader. And the absence of bullying and the uh, the, the nice atmosphere on campus and the fact that people pay attention to incidents that they occur um, really was something that he appreciated. And I was really glad to hear that. Um, one other thing I noticed is that we had some of our students, again, from the, the drama class who had a, produced a movie that was part of the Slow Film Festival. So, lots of good things going on. That's it. Can we have the lights back on? Is that? I'm sorry, it's just, it's just hard on my old eyes. Thank you. So next on the agenda is <laughs> Superintendent Smith's report. Thank you, President Troop. Um, few things in my report um, this month. First off, uh, Smart Walk has um, responded to input they got from our staff regarding uh, not having enough light right at the front whiteboard. So they came back in and added some dimmable additional lights right in the front of each classroom. Um, haven't heard anything back from the staff on it, so I assume that's a good thing. Um, <laughs> and, but they were pretty um, responsive in, um, you know, coming back and taking care of that to make sure that we were happy with the project at no additional charges. So that was pretty awesome. Um, also, the parent meeting that Terry was um, talking about um, went to, and one of the things that I also attended the seminar on um, school safety at the Small School Districts Association annual conference and um ultimately um the best protection is prevention and the best prevention is making sure that we're intervening when um kids are not connected to the school they feel isolated and um reach points of um desperation or um isolation that we're reaching out to them that we're building relationships with them and that when we um, see warning signs that we intervene. Um, ultimately, it's a, um, if we want to produce healthy kids, we need to have healthy relationships with kids on campus. And so I think the adults on campus here do a great job of building relationships with students. Um, I know that that goes all the way from the work that um, Hannah does in the front office to the work Liz does intervening with students discipline wise and even though we we punish the action we don't punish the kid and we bring, and she makes a strong effort to let them know after they 
do something and receive a disciplinary action that they're still part of our team and that they're still an important player on campus and that they're still important to us. And then the teachers day in and day out um, in the classrooms, building relationships with kids, inspiring kids to take some ownership of their education in the hopes that um, their education will help them build a better future. And it's something that um, the staff works very hard at. And so very proud of our efforts there, but um, we always want to redouble our efforts because ultimately um, violent incidents with kids um, have some precursors usually. And if we can identify what those precursors are and intervene, um, we're gonna help the students and help all of, all of us um, at the same time. Also um, in that vein, um, we are, we've been doing a program for many years around here called PAXIS. Um, many of you have probably seen our PAXIS awards at Flagpole every Monday morning. Um, we are um, intending to move towards a um, newer program, but also keep some of the old. And some of the old that's near and dear is obviously Flagpole Monday mornings. So we're gonna be bringing in character counts, um, working on that next year, and um, also keeping a few things from the old program that really um, have a high impact. So we're working on that to make sure kids are encouraged and building good character to become you know, healthy adults. Um, also had something in my report about the basketball teams, um, amazing. Um, we, from the wonderful basic skills that our um, PE teacher, Trish Wilson, um, helps kids learn and the sportsmanship that she helps them learn and then our basketball coaches reinforcing those skills and sportsmanship and teamwork and then them showing that sportsmanship and teamwork on the court was really an amazing thing and it paid off and um, you know our girls team won the both the tournament championship and the league championship and our boys team took second in both and uh, you know but what I was most proud of even more than the wins was the teamwork and the sportsmanship that they showed out on the, the court. Pretty amazing stuff. I was inspired by it. Um, we've also um, working with the CEF to re refresh our um, Chromebooks at the middle school level. Um, I want to thank Mr. Anderson and his work in procuring quotes for us um, on that and also the CEF for um, their commitment to donating $8,000 um, to help refresh those. Those laptops, I want to say, Sean, is it four years old at this point? And the kids at the middle school level carry them class to class with them so that they have them available when the teachers want to use them. And so they get they get worn because of the traveling. And um, but so we're working on that. Um, also went down and worked with um, Deneen DiCarlo, um, setting up Saturday morning um, with the CEF Foundation for the Sea Glass Festival parking. Um, I was concerned because of the rain and where we park out on that parking lot, but it's pretty solid parking lot, even in the rain, it doesn't um, get too squishy. So had a successful parking lot fundraiser both Saturday and Sunday for the Sea Glass Festival. And um, just want to mention that these parking lot fundraisers, whether it's Sea Glass Festival down there or down there for 4th of July or also up here on our lower field for 4th of July, um, those are huge for the school because it enables us to um, raise money for those 8th um, grade promotion parties and Yosemite trip and without sending the kids door to door or selling cookies or selling, you know, little things where you have to do a ton of fundraisers and you don't make very much money. Um, they're one day, they're an easy volunteer for parents. You know, you come down, you do two hours on a shift and, <coughs> and you're done. And so they're fantastic fundraisers. So I would just encourage everyone to continue participating and supporting in those because, um, a lot better than the other types of fundraisers that are available for schools um, for those types of activities. Also, um, 
We're in the process of doing our residence verifications. Um, a lot of work, and thank you, Hannah, for all your work on that. Um, and then the parent guide for interdistrict transfers has also been published and up on our website in two spots um, and has been provided to all the eighth grade students. And that's pretty much all I have, unless there's any questions. I have a question. Oh, sorry, go ahead, Ron. <coughs> you skipped over number three. I was just curious, uh, what the our, what's the request for? Oh, yeah, I was busy talking. <laughs> um, the RFQ for architectural services. So um, if we're going to plan any project going forward, um, one of the first steps is to get in a relationship with an architect so you can figure out what the project um, would look like and consist of um, so that you can bring it forward for um, any project for final approval. So working with the facilities committee on selecting an architect to um, to put in place to start partnering with. Um, For what so, project though? That's what I'm curious. Um, whatever project we want to build moving forward. Um, okay. Oh, I just thought you had to know the project before you got the RFP, but you did, that's backwards? No, this is request okay. for qualifications. So all this is is um, helping okay. Um, that way when ideas come out of facilities committee and um, we want some renderings that we could bring forward to the board so everyone can then the public so everyone can visualize what they look like we have an architect in place that can do that um, without that um, it's kind of hard to get the renderings that we want to see before we okay. do any approvals of a project so is that capital facilities plans or what is I'm sorry. Is that like for capital facilities plans? For when we eventually do something, when we need those services, is that? No, this would be for any project that the um, facilities committee is recommending. Um, then I could turn to an architect and okay. say, do a rendering for us, and then bring it forward to the board so that it's a um, proper um, presentation of, of what the project would look like okay. um, prior to approval. Um, just going back to your item one about smart lot, um, do we still have funds available with these um, uh, additions that have, we've been able to do? Still the Prop 39 funds, yeah. it, it, the project was designed to expend those funds. So it was, you have this much money, this is how much solar and lighting we can do. Basically what they did was estimate the cost of the lighting and then spend the rest of the money on the solar and then it all had to fit into their formula so that there's enough cost savings to get it approved by the state. But if, have we, I know we hadn't expended all the funds at one point, have we, have we now done that? We are, yeah, we're in the process of expending all those funds. Um, we haven't made the final payments. I actually have a meeting next week with a walkthrough scheduled with SmartWatt and with our MOT manager. And we're gonna walk the whole project, confirm that everything's up to snuff, and then um, we'll be doing <coughs> final sign off on the project. And after that, they would receive final payments. Okay, no other questions? Uh, we'll proceed then to the LCAP update. Um, LCAP update, um, we're moving along. We've got a meeting next week with, we're adding a few um, community members to our meeting next week. So, um, see, get some of their, a little more of their um, ideas and, and what to do with that. Um, it's going to be time to start writing the LCAP. Um, Did they change the template again? <laughs> Little it's bit. a little bit. <laughs> I'm thinking that's sort of a moving target. Right. Seemingly. Um, but there's some things that with the LCAP meetings that we've had school board meetings, we've got a, a science night coming up at the very beginning of um, May. Um, we've got career day coming up with our middle fourth through eighth grade middle schoolers. And it's Mrs. Dels, Victoria Dels and I are working on that. Seemingly, we have to ask at least 20 people to get about eight, so um, <laughs> kind of getting, getting uh, some people lined up to come and do that. Um, some automotive people, some radio people, TV personalities. Um, 
Victoria has somewhat of an, uh, an in in some of the um, performing arts. Um, Bless you. Piece, so, so that's Bless kind you. of fun. Um, also, along with that is a the parent survey for the Healthy Kids Survey for our school culture, et cetera. Um, we'll be going out via Parents Square on Friday, and that includes a um, staff survey as well. And that will go um, via email for our staff. Um, so goes out this Friday for all the parents. It's about 60 questions. It's a little bit um, lengthy, but there's a lot of um, a lot of good information coming out of that. So, and that needs to be sent out every two years. And so, it's out two years. The kids actually took it a couple of weeks ago, seventh grade class. So, that's um, in and, and done. So, um, if you'd like to come to our meeting next Wednesday, we'd love to have you. And I always offer that up, but well, you know. Um, and that's all I have for right now. Thank you, folks. Okay. Um, next thing is high school options. Uh, there is no material attached to this agenda item this month. Uh, but if any, if there's any public discussion, uh, we welcome that at this time. Okay, and then um, in the February meeting, we said that we would have uh, a discussion about um, updating our, the, the district's plan for high school options. So that'll be an agenda item on the April meeting where we will present what we know and invite other interested parties to present anything that they might have. Uh, next thing is the consideration of the consent agenda. As I mentioned earlier, <coughs> we've struck uh, item seven from the consent agenda. So this is a vote to consider items one through six. Is there a motion to pre uh, approve the consent agenda? So moved. Member Friend moves. Is there a second? I'll second. And Member Wright seconds a motion to uh, approve the consent agenda. Is there any discussion? Uh, Ms. Held, will you record the vote, please? Member Friend? Aye. Aye. Member Wilson? Aye. Member Brown? Aye. Member Aye. Aye. Okay. Um, I'm going to suggest that we take a short no, I'm not going to suggest. We're going to take a short. <laughs> we are going to take a short break before we get to the action items. So uh, let's see. By our official clock, it looks like it's 14 after. It's 20 so, after. Hmm? It's 19 after. I'm sorry. <laughs> the big hand is. It's, it's, it's one hand shy of the four. 14 after. So uh, we'll resume at 25 past by our official clock. <laughs>